We are doing some jumbo knotless braids for my baby girl Kehlani for the summertime and we added in a splash of purple because she's out of school so now we get to play around with the colors. But before we jump into that let me not forget to invite you to hit that subscribe button and come join our family. We will greatly appreciate having you here. We do a little bit of everything, mostly hair and makeup. But every now and then I dabble in some stuff I ain't got no business doing. So uh, jumping back into this, as you can see, Lana hair is matted and tangled. So I'm going in with the Twin Ivy Mixed Curls Detangling Spray. This is my favorite detangling spray for Kehlani's curls. It really helps soften them up, especially because she experiences a lot of like webbing tangles rather than knots so that I can detangle them a little bit better without causing her too much pain. Now she is experiencing all of the, these tangles because I did not touch her hair for about two weeks. Yes, I know that's terrible, bad mom, but honey, life be getting busy and sometimes I just don't be feeling like doing no hair, okay? So that's why I'm throwing in these jumbo knotless braids because this will at least give me two to three weeks off of having to do Kehlani's hair and she won't be experiencing all of those tangles from me just putting it in a ponytail and telling her to run up out the dough. So I'm going in with a fine tooth comb and it, to me, this helps with me getting all those fine knots out of her hair. She has very fine curls, these beautiful waves. And the fine tooth comb works a whole lot better than the detangling brush and the wide tooth comb. I know it's weird, but it works for me. This was all of her shed hair. Now, again, that was two weeks worth, so it was nothing out of the ordinary. Yes, it looks a little bit scary, but it is okay because that hair looks beautiful, healthy, and it's shining and glowing, okay? So right now, I am pre-parting her sections off. I'm gonna pre-part three sections off, and this is gonna help me kind of get the layout of my jumbo knotless braids. I'm going in with my Shine and Jam Conditioning Gel to make them parts crisp, and clean, baby, all right? I say this all the time. My part might not be straight, but baby, it's gonna be clean and crisp. You won't be able to see it from the moon. You'll be like, ooh, is that Lonnie's parts? It is indeed. Get you some Shining Jam conditioning gel. So once I part that off, I use some banana clips to clip it away, and we're gonna start in the very back. And again, we're doing jumbo, a knotless braid, so the parting is definitely gonna be big because I'm not trying to sit here for no eight hours doing no braids on the eight-year-old. Absolutely not. We get into this style. I want to show you guys two methods that I use to install the knotless braids, and that's going to be the underhand method and the overhand method. At break, I am in my grown woman era, okay? I am bringing chic, casual, comfortable, modest, but also serving sexy at the same time. You need to be shopping with me at Express. I just joined the Style Editor Express program where I'm bringing you outfits for the summer. All of these outfits will be linked down below in my description box. I'm adding in more of the Shine and Jam gel around the base of the braid. This is gonna help with all of her flyaways and keep it nice sleek and smooth and this also helps with me gripping and I did not blow dry Kehlani's hair her hair is still wet and that's going to also help with her flyaways too so this is the hair that I'm using it is a ombre black to purple and it's already pre-stretched because honey I do not know how to pre-stretch no hair and this saves me so much time and this is the sections that I'm going to be adding into each braid they're a little bit bigger because we're doing jumbo braids now let's get into these methods on how I'm going to install her braids. So the first method that I'm going to go in with is the underhand method. So if you're not quite sure what the difference is, it's pretty much the rotation of your three strands as you're creating your three strand braid. So for the underhand method, what you're doing is rotating those strands underneath each other to create your braid. And when I add in my braiding hair, I'm adding the braiding hair between my index finger and thumb and the hair that's over my index finger. So those are the two strands that will receive the braiding hair. Then I do a rotation with my hands and I always use my right hand to add in the hair. I'm right hand dominant, so this is just what works for me. The underhand method is definitely my preferred way of doing it. It is my self-taught way of how I began doing three strand braids. It's also a very popular method to use when you're doing cornrows and regular box braids. It helps with tucking the hair and it keeps a nice tight base for your strands. So you don't get all these loose flyaways. You can kind of grip them and tuck them under each other in order to have a nice clean braid. Now I do love 
this method because it is the one I'm most accustomed to. But for Kehlani's hair, it can get a little like difficult because she doesn't have as much texture. So when it comes to gripping her hair, I feel like I'm a pulling her hair a little bit more than I need to rather than when I'm using the overhand method. Moving on to the next method, the overhand method, which I feel works best for Kehlani's texture. And pretty much what I'm doing here is the opposite of the underhand method. Instead, I am rotating these strands over on top of each other to create the three strand braid. Now for me, this one definitely helps where I feel like I'm getting a nice grip on her hair. I'm not pulling it too hard and she still has a uniformed and clean braid. Now it's a little bit different to add her braiding hair. I do about two or three rotations before I start adding in the braiding hair. And I'm adding the braiding hair with in between the middle and the far right sections. Those are the two sections that I'm adding in the braiding hair now how many pieces to add is completely up to you it depends on how thick or how long you want the braid to be so I added in anywhere from six to eight strands of braiding hair for each braid now I try to make sure it looks as natural as possible so it all flows together and it doesn't look like an obvious piece of braiding hair being added in this is what we're looking like at the end. I did wrap up all of the braids with some perm rods and dip them in some hot water. Please be careful with the babies. So those were dipped and dried. I then went in with a lot of body foam mousse and this is going to help with any other flyaways that might have strayed from the gel. I'm going to lay that down real good and then I'm going to add a satin wrap on top of it to kind of allow it to dry and set. And here she is all finished up. That purple is definitely popping. The curls came out super cute and it was a nice added touch for her jumbo knotless braids. And then here are a couple of ways we decided to style her jumbo knotless braids. We did a half up, half down style and the parting looks amazing. Let me add that. I also did two uh, ponytails, which I thought she looked absolutely adorable in. And of course, we had to do some space buns. And the curls are giving. Absolutely. We did it with the purple and the curls. Love this combination for her. And then the last style we did was a uh, ponytail with a couple of cute little accents to uh, accentuate her beautiful face. And that is it for this tutorial, guys. Thank you so much for joining us on another one. We greatly appreciate you guys being here with us. Do not forget to hit that like button if this is content you would love to see here on our channel. And we will see y'all on another one. Be blessed and be safe.